Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Good evening. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, our Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. We come to give you thanks and to praise you for your greatness and your love. Thank you, O God, for bringing us through another day to this time. Thank you for your love and with which you have surrounded us, for your blessings that you have poured out upon us. Thank you that you have led us every step of the way, that you have never left us nor forsaken us. Thank you for Jesus Christ and all the blessings that are ours in him, that you have provided for us all that we have needed for godliness and for life. Thank you for meeting our every need for the fulfillment of your promise to, to provide our daily bread. Thank you for home and family, for friends and acquaintances. Thank you for work to do and things to occupy our time. Thank you for the fellowship of the believers and of the church. Thank you for your full salvation. That Jesus Christ, who was perfect in every way, was made sin for us, that we might become this righteousness of God in him. For the atonement that was made by his blood that was shed. For the power of the blood of Christ to cleanse us from all sin. Father, you kept us today and provided for us, but we are conscious that there are times when we forgot you, when we didn't heed your voice. 
when we turned our backs on you, when we shied away from you, when you reached out to touch us. We confess, Father, that there are times when our thoughts strayed and we shut you out. We ask, O oh God, that you would forgive. You who have promised that if we confess, you would forgive and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We confess to you and trust in your promise. Trust in the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ to make us clean and acceptable to you. And we ask, O oh God, that you would renew in us a right spirit and create in us clean and pure hearts. We ask again that you would, as we, would, as we commit our lives to you, that you would take us, fill us with your spirit and use us to the glory of your name. Now, Father, as we spend this time together, we ask that you would take control of, of this, this time, that you would open our eyes to see the wonderful things that are in your word and our ears to hear you as you speak and our hearts to respond to your love. Come now, Lord, and teach us. Lead us in your way and glorify yourself in us and through us. We ask this in all our prayers, in the name of Jesus. Amen. reading this evening is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. 
He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world and said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be all yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. This is the Gospel of Christ. Amen. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Temptation and how to deal with it has been a problem to man from the earliest time. Living in this world, man has had to face and cope with three major challenges. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These have been man's enemies 
from time immemorial. Many great men and women of tremendous potential have fallen victims to this three-pronged attack. It was to face this attack in the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis, chapter 3. We read how the devil tempted Eve and showed her the fruit of the tree that God had forbidden them to eat. In verse 6 of chapter 3, we see, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made covering for themselves. The first man, Adam, became a victim as a result. And so this has plagued men and women since that time. Jesus Christ, referred to by Paul as the second Adam, knew what it meant to be tempted and to face these, this three-pronged attack. The passage from the Gospel that was read as a lesson from Luke chapter 4 draws our attention to this as we read it. As the devil tempted Jesus, having been, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days, and he was hungry. The devil came to him and says, if, you, if you're the son of God, command these stones to become bread. In chapter 3, verse 3, we, we see this temptation given to Jesus, and Jesus replied, man shall not live on bread alone. And that was the lust of the flesh. Verse 5, we see the devil showing him all the kingdoms of the world, the, gr the glory of the, all the kingdoms. He says, I've got the authority to give this to anyone I like. I will give it to you. If you worship me, the lust of the eyes. And then he took him upon the temple, the highest point of the temple, and told him, well, you, you're the son of God. God will, has given his angels charge over you. If you jump down from here, they will protect you. The temptation to do something spectacular to gain the, the acceptance of the peoples that, to whom he has been sent. The lust and the pride of life. He was tempted and the temptations were real and necessary. And this was not the only time. For that verse 40, verse 13 of chapter 4, we read that the devil left him until an opportune time. He said, I was coming back. We also recall in the scriptures how when Jesus told his disciples that he, the Son of Man, was going to be arrested and was going to suffer and die, Peter said, not so, Lord, that can't happen. Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. We find that in Matthew chapter 16, verses 22 and 23. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God but merely human concerns. In the Garden of Gethsemane, on the night before he was on which he was arrested, as Jesus with his disciples prayed, there he was he, conscious of what was ahead of him, and in agony he cried out to God, let this cup pass from me. The temptation to give up and turn his back on what God was asking him to do. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And even on the cross, as he was nailed to the cross, there the devil tempted him. The people cried out as he looked at him on the cross, and they, they, they jeered at him, and they, they laughed at him, and they cried out, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. We will believe you. This 
the temptation that the devil continue to bring and throw at the Lord Jesus Christ. What can we learn from all of this? Temptation originates from the devil. In the letter of James, chapter 1, verses 12 to 15, we read, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own desire and intent and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. God allows the devil to tempt. We recall in the book of Job how the devil came and spoke to God about Job. When God said to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil said, well, you know, you're protecting him. And God gave him permission to go ahead and, tempt and test Job. In every situation in life, the enemy of our soul is waiting to use it to his glory, to use it to defeat us and to discredit God. Secondly, even spirit-filled and spirit-led men and women are vulnerable. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, we read, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently, but watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. The devil will attack the weakest areas of our lives. He will also attack our strong points because we least expect to be attacked there. And we let our guard down. Third, the devil is an expert at timing. Often he comes at a time of spiritual exaltation. We recall the story of of Elijah on Mount Carmel with the, with the prophets of Baal, the priests of Baal, and the victory that he won over them that day, and he saw God's power and glory. But after that, after the rains came and the message came to him, Jezebel is going to kill you. Jezebel says that I will do this and even more to Elijah. And Elijah ran because he was afraid. He had seen God's power, and he knew that he could be victorious through, through God's presence and power. Secondly, the enemy would attack us in times of physical and emotional weakness. John the Baptist, having done a tremendous ministry preaching and alerting the people of Israel to the coming of the Messiah, arrested and imprisoned, and depressed, had doubts about Jesus Christ, having pointed him out as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He sends a message to him, are, the, are you the one who is to come, or do we look for another? I recall an old servant of God, a tremendous man of God, who had blessed so many people on this island, now in his old age, just on his way to leaving this life, he was in bed at home and sick, and he sent a message to me, and, and I was amazed that he should call me. I was a very young man then. And I stepped into the room with him that afternoon, and he immediately said to me, Oh, my young brother, you're my young brother, the demons are after me. The demons are after me. That man of God was at a point of weakness. The devil will also attack at times of rest and relaxation. 
when our guard is down. We recall the story of Bathsheba, of David and Bathsheba. David, the very powerful warrior king, took time off from fighting and going to fight, going to the battlefield, stayed home and was tempted when he saw Bathsheba, lusted after her and fell into sin. The devil proclaimed victory that day. The devil always comes with an appropriate temptation. Temptation may often involve the misuse of God-given powers and abilities to use them to satisfy our material needs or to take a shortcut to reach our legitimate goals. And we would probably cover, up, cover it up by saying the end justifies the means or to use them to gain the praise and adulation of others and gain popularity. Victory is no guarantee of future immunity. Though the battle may be won, the war continues. In the Second World War, in the Pacific, the American forces were driven from the islands in the South Pacific. And one that was most outstanding was the battle to, for the island of Bataan. Eventually, the, the American forces were driven off of Bataan. General MacArthur, who was the general responsible in charge, on his way on leaving, the last words he said as he left Bataan was, I will return. History shows that he returned and they won a resounding victory, victory at Bataan. The devil says, I will return. When he left Jesus that day, he went off and said for an, an opportune time, some other time, when it would be more effective, more meaningful. How do we deal with temptation? We need to realize that there is no sin in temptation. When we're tempted, it doesn't mean that we have sinned. The Bible tells us that Jesus was tempted in all points, as, just as we are, and yet was he without sin. The Word of God tells us in the times of temptation, call upon me. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you. Secondly, we need to recognize that when we're tempted, it isn't anything unique. Paul, in his letter, the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13, wrote, There is no temptation taken you that is not faced by others, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able to bear, but will with the temptation always, always make a way of escape. Thirdly, we can resist by using the word of God. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ did. Follow his example. Take the word of God and hide it in our hearts, and we can call on that, use that as a defense against the enemy when he comes to tempt us. And though we are made strong through overcoming the enemy, though we are made stronger every time we are able to resist temptation, we need to be alert and watchful. We need to be alert and watchful. Jesus said, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Finally, listen to what St. Paul, St. Paul's exhortation to the Ephesians, found in chapter 6. Last of all, be clothed with the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his strength. Put on all of God's armor, then you will be able to stand against the evil tricks of the devil. Our fight is not against human beings. No, it's against rulers, against authorities, against world powers of this darkness, and against evil spiritual beings in the heavenly world. This is why you must take up all of God's armor. Then 
when the time for battle comes, you will be able to resist, and after you have fought your best, you will stand. Stand firm, using truth as a belt around your waist. Put on the chest plate of righteousness. The shoes on your feet, be ready to tell the good news about peace. And along with everything else, take up faith for a shield. With this, you will be able to put out all the burning arrows of the, ed the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and use the sword of the Spirit. This is the message of God. Pray with the Spirit at all times. Use all kinds of prayers and requests. Be on guard. Always pray for the holy people. Pray for me too. Then when I open my mouth to speak, the message will be given to me. With boldness, I will make clear the secret of the good news. I'm a representative in chains for this gospel. Pray that I will speak boldly about it as I should. The Word of God. Father, we are so conscious that we need you all the time. We are so conscious of the assault of the enemy, how time and time again he comes to pull us away from you, turn us aside. We cannot fight him alone and we need you, your help and your strength. We ask, O oh God, that the victory that you have already won over him, you would proclaim and you would manifest that in, in our lives, that our lives may bring glory and honor and praise to you. Grant us this night your peace and your rest. Fill or rest or sleep with your presence and bring us all safely to the morning. Prepare us for tomorrow tomorrow's opportunities, tomorrow's challenges, and for the, the experiences that we will have of recognizing your goodness and your mercy and the fulfillment of your promises. Lord, we ask this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Love.
Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.